Hello everyone, this is Don Ferguson with the Appalachian Search and Rescue Conference and I'm back with another video tutorial on using IGT for SAR. In this video, I wanted to talk about integrating IGT for SAR or ArcGIS with MyTopo Terrain Navigator Pro. Terrain Navigator Pro is a mapping software that's popular with the search and rescue community as well as mapping professionals in general. And while it's not a full GIS in the sense that it doesn't allow us to freely interact with the, with the spatial data, nor does it allow us to create new data from, uh, the, from the spatial data. Uh, it is quite powerful, particularly in allowing us to quickly and efficiently print maps uh, that we may want to send out on field tasks uh, or even uh, tracking assignments. So if you're using IGT for SAR and ArcGIS, you may be asking why would I want to use Terrain Navigator Pro? Well, there could be an instance where someone that you're working with is not familiar with IGT for SAR or ArcGIS, but they are comfortable in using Terrain Navigator Pro. And you want to somehow get the information that you've recorded in ArcGIS or IGT for SAR out of there and into Terrain Navigator Pro. And MyTopo has actually made that quite easy for us. Uh, and, uh, and we'll see how to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start off by looking at a session within IGT for SAR. And here I've created an incident uh, and I've created some features in that incident. The polygons that you see on the screen here are search segments, and these are segments that we've identified uh, and, uh, and we want a team to go out and eventually search these individual segments. Um, so we've created these in IGT for SAR, and now, like I said, we want to somehow get these out of IGT for SAR and into Terrain Navigator Pro, so someone that's familiar with Terrain Navigator Pro can utilize the, uh, the products that we've developed here. And through this tutorial, we'll talk about not only adding features that are relevant to the search incident, but we'll also talk about features of, or we'll also talk about ways of enhancing the base maps within Terrain Navigator Pro using data from IGT for SAR and ArcGIS. So in this instance, we want to go ahead and we want to find a way to get the shape or the, uh, the search segments out of here and into Terrain Navigator Pro, and it's actually quite easy. What we're going to do is we're going to export this feature set or this feature as a shapefile. And then in Terrain Navigator Pro, we'll import that uh, shapefile, which it allows us to do. So uh, to export this feature, the, shape, or the search segments, we're going to come over to the uh, table of contents here. And, uh, and we're going to right click on that data layer. So this is the search segments, which falls within the segments group. It's the search segments, so we're going to right click on that and choose data and export data. And this is going to give us an option of exporting either all the features or all the features in the view extent, meaning all the features that we can see on the screen at a particular time, depending on our zoom level. Now, if I hop back out of this uh, this window, just this pop-up window, just for a moment, and if I go back here and I actually select a few of uh, a few of these features, if I then go back to export, so right-click on search segments, go to data, export. I'm given another option, and that mean, and that is that option is to select or just to export the selected features. So I can just export one or two of these features uh, as opposed to all of them. In this particular case, I want to go ahead and I want to export all the features, and I want to use the same coordinate system that this data layer uses, uh, or I can have the other option of using the data frame. In this particular case. Uh, in IGT for SAR, usually the data frame coordinate system and the layer source data uh, have uh, at least of the uh, default layers that are that are in IGT for SAR, they should all have the same coordinate system. So next, the next choice I have is to, is to uh, decide where I want to export it and the file name uh, that I want to give it. So I'm going to uh, within my incident uh, directory, uh, I'm going to export this and you can export it anywhere you want but I'm going to put it in the products folder uh, and I'm going to just name it simple search segments and I'm going to export it as a as a, uh, a shape file I have other choices file or geodatabase file or personal geodatabase uh, and so on but I want to export it as a shape file and then I'm going to hit save and then okay and then it's going to ask me if I want to add that to the map. In this particular case, I don't want to do that because I've already got uh, the search segments here. If you do, that's fine, um, but, uh, but I don't need it in this particular case, so I'm going to say no. 
All right, and that's all you need to do within um, within IGT for SAR. So now let's go ahead and jump over to Terrain Navigator Pro. Okay, so this is Terrain Navigator Pro. For those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, it's a pretty simple environment. And again, it's pretty popular with the search and rescue community. So I imagine a lot of you people, a lot of people watching the videos, uh, do have some familiarity with it. So um, once you open up Train Navigator Pro and kind of get to the general area of where your incident is, one of the first things you want to do before you do anything else, before you start adding information here or anything like that, is you actually want to create what's called a project. And a project, so under Layers, My Projects, uh, I'm going to create a new project called, in this place, Cooper's Rock, which is the name of my search. And I'm going to click OK. And what that project will do, having created a new project, will allow us to do will allow us to store all the features that we draw or create on the map uh, during this session within this project. So I can actually save it as an archive, or I can actually even export that um, this project and save it as a as the entire project as a file. Within that project file will be all the features that I've created on the map. So for instance, once I pull in the search segments here, uh, and if I want to then package this project up to be able to email it to someone that so they can open it up on scene, I will send them a project file as opposed to sending them each individual track or waypoint or whatever it may be. So I've created a new project. Now I want to get those search segments into Terrain Navigator Pro. And to do that, I'm going to go up to layers, and there's multiple ways of doing this, uh, but I'm going to go to layers, and I'm going to say, and I'm going to overlays. I'm going to import a new overlay. Uh, and my options here are importing a shape file, a KML, KMZ, or a CAD file. In this case, I want a shape file, and I want this search segments one. So I'm going to say open, and you can see it pulled in that overlay and laid it on the map in the, in the correct spot. Uh, and uh, uh, now I can edit a few things on this. One, I want to change the lines and the fill features. So I'm going to change my line style, my color. I'm going to make it look similar to what it was in uh, IGT for SAR. And then I'm going to change my fill option. So I also want to label these. Uh, and I have that option here as well under label style. And I want to label them with the uh, segment names that they were given in IGT for SAR. So luckily, when you import a shapefile into Train Navigator Pro, it also pulls in all the attributes for that shapefile or for that feature as well. So in this particular case, I want to give the I want to use the area name as my label. So I'm going to click on that, and you can see it kind of puts a label there. But I want to change the color uh, a little bit so it stands out. There's a little bug in Train Navigator Pro in that when you first do it, it doesn't allow you to change the color. But if you close this and then, and then reopen the overlays, it gives you the option. This is some kind of bug, but not a big deal. Uh, so now I want to change it to white so it stands out a little bit more. Another little bug is sometimes the labels aren't quite lined up, but that's okay. Uh, we can deal with that. And let me, let me show you how we uh, can actually identify which of the segments is, is which. So if you click on the information tool and then come down to your overlays, you'll see that your cursor turns to an O. Uh, and then if you uh, just click on any segment, uh, it, it'll pop up some information about that object, which one you popped, or which one you selected. So in this case, I selected FF01. It's got uh, an area uh, of this and a length of that. These are the area and the length are all calculated within Train Navigator Pro. That's not data that came across with uh, when you imported the shape file. However, if you open up the object information, uh, it does have all the attributes that, uh, that were carried over from Terrain Navigator, or from ArcGIS or IGT for SAR. So these are all the attributes in the attribute table uh, for the search segments uh, that got copied over into Terrain Navigator Pro. So we have all that information. We haven't lost any of that just because we brought it into Terrain Navigator Pro. And there's a couple other ways to get to that. So one, you know, first I left clicked on uh, on the overlay, but if I also right click on it, I can go straight to that object uh, overlay object information, or I can right click on it and go to the overlay information and get that kinds of things.
So if there is some confusion like this, which one's AA04 and which one's AA05, I can just right click on it and say overlay object information and it'll tell me that that is indeed AA04. All right, so I have this as an overlay. What what else can I do with it? You know, let's say I want to assign one of these segments to a team to go out into the field to search. What? Uh, how can I go about um, giving them this boundary on the map uh, for them to go search? So, unfortunately, with the overlays, I'm not able to turn off individual objects or overlay objects. But what I can do is I can take these overlays and I can convert it into a track or route. I usually convert them into tracks and I keep in, in Terrain Navigator Pro. I leave my map navigating features as routes and I use my search elements as tracks. So I'm going to go ahead and create a track from the overlay object. So I just did it for this AA05 and you can see that it kind of changed the border. It actually created uh, a track of that particular um, segment. So if I go back to layers and then tracks, you can see that I have now have that AA05. It gave it that name uh, automatically based off of the attributes from uh, uh, from that table. So uh, I also want to, if I want to fill that in, I can just click on fill the loop and you can see that it kind of fills it in for me. Uh, and then I can change uh, those features as, as I need to. I'm not going to fill it in, um, but what I am going to do is close that. Now I'm going to turn off the overlays so that hides those search segments and I'm left with just this one feature on the map which I want to assign to a team to go out and search. So I just go up to file, print, and I've created a template in Terrain Navigator Pro. Uh, I need to change it to landscape. Uh, so I've created this template in Train Nav Navigator Pro that gives me some information. I would go in and it, as I prepare to print this map off, I go in and make some edits here on the mission number and the dates and, uh, and the segment assigned and some of those things. But as you can see, my track, which was my search segment, is outlined here on the map and it's ready to go. And now all I need to do is say print. And that's pretty much it. So, uh, so that's how you get features from uh, ArcGIS into Terrain Navigator Pro uh, in order to be able to use Terrain Navigator Pro. So uh, now that I've created, um, now if I want to send this information to someone else as a, in terms of like the whole package uh, with, the, uh, with the overlays and everything, whether they're on or off, doesn't matter. Uh, but if I want to send that whole package to someone, I'm going to go to File, Export, and export either active project or uh, um, yeah so I'm going to export the active project uh, and it's going to export it as a TPA and I can put it wherever I need to in order to uh, in order to export that so then I could send that to someone else uh, so they can continue to work uh, on uh, on this particular um, search in train navigator pro as opposed to um, as opposed to IGT for SAR. The other thing that I wanted to mention here, uh, and let me go, let me turn this overlay off. Um, when we look at this base map, we see that you know there's not a lot of features on this base map. There are actually a lot of trails in here that aren't represented in the base map in Terrain Navigator Pro, but we have those in um, in IGT for SAR. So these dotted lines that you see here are all trails. And we got that trails, we got that trail layer in the form of a shape file from the park superintendent. So if you get in if you are just using Train Navigator Pro, you can actually import any shape file. So in this case, these trails. So I'm going to export these trails uh, under line features, trails data, export data, and I'm going to export all the features, and I'm going to save this as Cooper's Rock Trails, and save, okay, not going to add it to the map, switch back to Train Navigator Pro, and here, again, importing an overlay, the Cooper's Rock Trails, uh, and you can see that it's now added those uh, those trails layers 
on here. I'm going to make it red so you can see it clearly. So all those trails. And uh, if you want to label them, you can label them with their names, which would be kind of crowded, or you can just not label them at all. And to get information from them, you can just right click and say object overlay or overlay object information. And it gives you the name of uh, the name of that particular object. All right, so that's how to get data into, into Train Navigator Pro and how to share Train Navigator Pro projects with, with other people. So that's all for today's video. Thanks for listening and thanks for using IGT for SAR, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.